welcome to another video with me and my blackboard of death. So here you have about eight hours of training right there. The average stuff that you get in a basic, uh, basic firearms class typically. So you'll get like this for the introduction. They're like, oh, this is just basic stuff. And then we'll start with practical application. Actually, eh, not really. You're, you're getting almost everything except for like obviously low light or something like that. But uh, this is where a lot of the training has failed you because each one of these blocks represents something that is actually pretty hard for your brain to chew on and it's actually kind of a skill in and of itself. And uh, I'm going to use an analogy uh, here to talk about like how you should or a couple of analogies on how you should train but I'll put in the conditions and how you should not train. I'll do the how you should not train that. You should not do that. Eight hours learning all this crap. Uh -uh. So now, what you should do is more uh, an analogy. Well, not an analogy. I mean examples. Uh, but an example would be a, one example would be a martial arts method, and that is something that actually does exist today. It's like hugatsu or whatever. It's like it's Japanese martial art mixed with you know firearms training. It's really funky. Um, but the concept is that you're learning firearms and uh, firearms usage and all the techniques, basically all of this, in a f martial arts format. However, they're adding in like weird little, you know, whatever um, with it. And, you know, that is actually more conducive to how the brain works and how you're, you're biting off little chunks at a time. I mean, how do you eat an elephant? This is like an elephant. You eat it one bite at a time. Okay. One bite, one bite, one bite, one bite, one bite, one bite. Each day would require a bite, but you still want some breaks in between for your brain to process it and stuff. Because if you're going to teach this all in one day, typically by the time you get to the range and you actually perform all of it, you're operating off short-term memory. So uh, typically you're not retaining all this stuff. And there's also other things like interference principle and stuff like that where you're actually overriding stuff. And if you're already pre-experienced and in shooting, then it's probably not going to be a problem. A lot of this went through your filter of, you know, fact checking in your own brain or whatever. You know, you got your own internal Facebook going on. But the second example would be something that's more realistic. And this is the example that, uh, uh, like, I experienced in the Marine Corps in boot camp. As soon as you got your weapon out of the armory in boot camp, uh, whatever week that was, it was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm old. But, anyways. Uh, as soon as you got your weapon out of uh, the armory, you started reciting the safety rules every day, like a prayer, uh, multiple times a day. And you had to recite it verbatim. And then uh, you better follow them or there's going to be pain. And then you learn the parts. You learn how to break the thing down. And I didn't add disassembly because that and, you know, kind of goes with parts or whatever. But uh, you learn all the parts. You learn uh, to disassemble it. You learn the function of all the parts and stuff like that. And then you learn the operation, like the LM gas, lightweight, magazine-fed, gas-operated, air-cooled, shoulder-fired weapon. You'll learn that, and you recite that like a prayer. And then, then you learn all of this. All of this is covered in first phase, and there's three phases of the Marine Corps boot camp. And so you do this for weeks on end, and then you get into learning the fundamentals. So all this is a block in and of itself. And you learn all this within the span of like a week. And so each day you're learning something and then you're reciting it and doing it over and over and over again. And so you learn this one day. Okay, you learn, you know, the stance or the position, I guess you would say. And then you would learn, you know, grip. And then, you know, you would put those together in practical application. And then you would add this the next day, how, to, how it actually works. So you would add these three. You would practice uh, getting your position, you would do your grip, you get your side alignment, side picture, and then you would learn how the trigger works the day after that, or whatever. Whatever the system may be, but you, you incrementally learn that, and then you learn follow through, and then, of course, you get your practical application for like an entire week. You are just practicing doing that, and with coaches telling you what's wrong, what's messed up, and all that stuff. So, of course, you add other things on there, like ballistics and... Uh, stuff like that, like nomenclature of the bullets and all that other stuff, effective ranges and stuff. So you're learning a lot of different things, but it's spread out through a good amount of time. You're learning this in this period of two weeks. This right here is like two weeks worth of stuff, and then you qual at the end of it. Why 
can't you kind of do that today? Well, it's not really profitable. It's not very profitable. And then also add in the fact that, you know, you've got these other things that you would have to learn. We did learn um, this stuff, like basic reloads. That was taught after a lot of this stuff. You learned the basic concept, and you could do it slow. It didn't really matter. It wasn't really necessarily drilled. But you did learn this as well. It was like almost a whole day in and of itself of just learning all of them and then kind of practicing them somewhat. But uh, it was more in theory than it was actually an application, and you just did it with like a dry weapon or whatever. Went through the motions. Uh, same with this. Typically through the motions and with an empty magazine, learn to hit the bumper or whatever. But the point is, is that it was spread out through a good amount of time. It wasn't thrown at us in a day. And that's why typically in the Marine Corps, we did not see negligent discharges and stuff like that. We learned specifically how to unload the way they wanted us to. Uh, and how to load the way they wanted us to. And we practiced that, that concept every single day for weeks. And we did it under direct supervision, slow at first, and then we were put under time. Do it now. Do it now. Faster. You're not fast enough. Faster. And you had consequences for not going as fast as you could. So, you know, they gradually added on the pressure. You learned it, and then you were put under test, and then you were put under more pressure. So, my point is, is that that was a more functional model, and that is a real-world example of how you can actually teach somebody with a method they will remember for the rest of their life that's going to be put in the long-term procedural memory because I guarantee you any Marine today will still be able to recite a lot of the stuff that they learned and be able to do a lot of the stuff they, they learned, positions and all that stuff, because it was drilled into them every single day. Now, kind of going back to the Hugatsu, we could kind of... Re take what was taught to me in like the Marine Corps and what they're doing in Hugatsu where it's a, like a martial arts setting and teach civilians in a very similar way. And you could even compress that somewhat into like a belt system, I guess, because they could step out at any point, but their effectiveness is going to be based on their contribution to the program, I guess you could say, however you want to put it. Um, they'll, they're going to get out of it what they put into it, just like any kind of martial art, right? You're not going to be able to uh, get very good in your uh, decided martial art, and you're not going to learn how to be good at reloads if you don't get to your brown belt or black belt or whatever. If you don't stick with it and actually practice, you're not going to be very good at it because they're going to cover that and you're going to learn proficiency. If we treated firearms more like a martial art, because it's kind of on that same level as far as uh, neurological and uh, uh, neurological and physiological demand under stress, uh, the acute focus that we need in order to uh, provide precision to these kind of fine motor skills or even gross motor skills, much like in a martial art, then we need to um, practice it and practice it and practice it. And a lot of that has already been, you know, shown that in martial arts style format, we're doing interleave training. You're working for like an hour or maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours, and then you're doing physical training. I've already talked about reinforcement training for firearm skills. Imagine setting up like a firearms gym, and this is your white belt right here, right there. And then this is your second belt, your yellow belt or orange belt, whatever. And then of course you get into your green belts, brown belts and stuff like that and then you get your black belt with flashlights and stuff like that and you know clearing and stuff actual practical application stuff in the real world imagine how cool that would be firearms as a martial art what do you think about that put a comment below let me know what you guys think thanks a lot for watching and you guys have a